get you there. Heads up, Guam. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And steaks, ribs, seafood, and our famous fresh garden bar. Ruby Tuesday, good times you can taste. Right now on Primetime, more details have been released regarding the arrest of a former police officer and his brother. Plus, our Chris Barnett sits down with the recently appointed acting state historic preservation officer. And community members brought concerns and ideas to the public safety town hall meeting held in Timuni. Afade Guam, good evening. I'm Julius Santos. Unsealed court documents revealed more information about the case involving allegations of obstruction of justice that led to the arrest of a former police officer and FBI task force member, John Boom Matanonia, his brother William Matanonia, and Gregory Tykenko. Here's Once sworn to serve and protect the law, John Boom Matanonia faces federal charges for obstruction of justice and conspiracy to distribute meth. For the drug charges, he's accused of conspiring with others to distribute 50 grams or more of meth over a three-year period beginning in January 2016. As for the obstruction of justice charge, Mantanonia was linked to Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser's drug case. After two mistrials in Guam, the case was heard in California where the couple eventually pleaded guilty. It was during the second trial on Guam though that it's alleged that Mantanonia attempted to intimidate jurors to vote not guilty. One of those jurors was Gregorio Tykenko, who was arrested on Wednesday and indicted on contempt of court charges. Other jurors in the indictment were not identified, but Mantanonia, in one instance, is accused of corruptly positioning individuals during the trial within the courtroom to influence and intimidate a juror to vote not guilty. As for another juror, Mantanonia allegedly tried to intimidate the individual to sign a false and fraudulent affidavit. Unsealed exhibits in the Martinez and Moser case detail how Mantanonia, who was an investigator for the defense, was working on securing the not guilty verdict in the second trial. In a recorded phone conversation with Moser, the transcripts describe how they're like family and how he has to work hard on this. He described how he and his brother William, who was also indicted, were trying to influence Tykenko to vote not guilty. Quote, I met him personally and it's good to go. After the second mistrial was declared, but then details a phone conversation during which Martinez thanked Mantanonia. Mantanonia has pleaded not guilty. He was ordered to be on home detention and not allowed to work. He is also prohibited from leaving Guam and must surrender all his firearms. As for his brother, William Mantanonia, he also pleaded not guilty and today was granted release but must report to probation. As for Tykenko, he too pleaded not guilty and also ordered to report to probation. All three were ordered to stay away from each other. Additionally, the Mantanonia brothers were ordered to also stay away from defense attorneys and jurors in the Martinez and Moser drug case. Trial for all three has been scheduled for August. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Sabrina Salas, Matanani. Kelvin Mothness Tatato has been indicted on drug charges. The case was just recently unsealed in federal court. Tatato was indicted for conspiracy to distribute meth and attempted possession with the intent to distribute. According to court documents, starting from around February of last year, he allegedly conspired to distribute 50 or more grams of methamphetamine. In court, he pleaded not guilty. Trial was scheduled for August. His request for release was denied. Another allegation of clergy sex abuse has been filed in the District Court of Guam, identified as CO to protect his identity. He alleges, he alleges that he was sexually abused by, by now deceased priest Louis Bulliard. CO said the abuse occurred when he was 12 to 13 years old when attending the Barragata Parish and Boy Scout outings. Bulliard was a priest there and scoutmaster. The victim is 53 years old. He is seeking damages of up to $5 million and represented by the Berman O'Connor and Mann Law Firm. The second in a series of public safety town hall meetings was held Wednesday night at the Tumuni Community Center. Jonah Gancharfras has more on this. Island leaders including Governor Lulian Guerrero, representatives from the FSM consulate, law enforcement and stakeholders gathered to hear the concerns and frustrations of the community regarding public safety at a town hall meeting held in the central village of Tumuni. The series of meetings were prompted as a result of the machete attack in Mangilao that occurred earlier this month. Guam Police Department Chief Stephen Ignacio started off by stating that GPD has continued to move forward, building many positive relationships in the community with organizations like Munetlu and the Micronesia Resource Center. We're trying to bring in the, the, the younger children so that we can provide some positive uh, outcomes and positive behaviors that, that they can uh, follow. Uh, we continue to, to do our outreach with the community 
And uh, like I said, we're, we're here to listen and uh, build, build upon uh, uh, the, these bullet points that we took away from the Manila meeting. Some of those main action points Chief Ignacio is referring to include enforcing compact impact laws, increasing streetlights in the village, addressing abandoned buildings and parks, revisiting alcohol, loitering, and curfew laws, to name a few. Manila resident Martha Martinez, who is originally from Mexico, says the issue of migration is an emotional one for her. Because I know right now the perception of people from Mexico isn't always so positive, and I can share a lot of, um, maybe there's this mix of emotion that comes with that, and. I can relate to people maybe from uh, other communities, other parts of the world that have also moved around. The challenge before us, I think, is to remember that, that we've built artificial barriers between us that were actually, they're very new and they're not natural. And we have neighbors that are suffering because of a lot of these barriers. We have a global inequality. Aganya Heights resident and recently retired Chief of Airport Police Bob Camacho has been a victim, his house broken into on four different occasions. He asked what the recidivism rate is at DOC, saying it's one of the key factors as to what is taking place in the community. If the recidivism rate at DOC is 70%, so it stands to reason that if we focus on some of those inmates in the prison, correspondingly, they're not going to come back to prison because they been treated, rehabilitated, what have you. They have a job skill, they have education. Camacho also talked about outreach in the FSM community. Do you realize that in the joke, the, the suicidal rate is one of the highest in Micronesia, even nationally, even New York Times have mentioned that in Micronesia that the suicidal rate is high compared to many other places. So if that is the issue, is it mental illness, is it social uh, adjustments, then we need to look at those things. Major Manny Chong, who is the acting police commander for GPD, also spoke on recidivism. I can tell you two reasons why there's so much recidivism with offenders. First off, for most of them, life is better inside than it is outside. Okay? They have three meals, get the shower, they have to use an actual toilet. Okay? They have air conditioning, they don't have to do anything but eat. Okay? So that's why certain uh, offenders reoffend. Another uh, uh, group of offenders, they try to make, they, they get arrested, they try to make a better life for themselves. But when they apply for jobs, there's this little box that says, have you ever been arrested or convicted of a crime? And that just shuts them down. Chong added that GPD has done their due diligence, conducting outreaches with the FSM community. He recalled when they did an outreach at Hemlani's apartments in Harmon and how all the male young adults ran off, leaving just the elderly women and little kids. Those guys don't commit crimes. Okay, we need to do, talk to the ones that are committing the crimes. Okay, so they, we know now that they don't want to talk to us. So we're talking to you guys, the leaders, so that you can talk to them. We need to stop acting irresponsible as a guest. Over the course of the meeting, several others spoke out touching on the importance of working together. My name is Hendrik Ivlok and I am Jukis 100%. I first came to Guam prior to the effective of the compact of free association. So I was here with a great deal of experience from that point on transitioning to this period. I accept the fact that there is no perfect community in this world. I am also of the acceptance that together we can make a difference. The next public safety town hall is scheduled for July 3rd at the Dededo Senior Citizen Center and then at the Jigo Gymnasium on July 24th. Both start at 6 p.m. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Goncharfras. He was arrested for apparently being high on weed and packing heat. Convicted felon 29-year-old Clint Rosales Abad was pulled over near near the Fisheye Marine Park on Tuesday. The police officer noted that he was responding slowly and had significantly dilated pupils. Court documents state Abad admitted to smoking weed and meth an hour earlier. The passenger inside the car told police that Abad was stoned on weed. Inside the car, police also found a gun and bullets. Abad was charged with possession of a firearm without an ID, driving while impaired and reckless driving. 
In other news, it was a pullover for expired tags, but instead police arrested the driver for possession of drugs. Wednesday morning, Port Police officers were on their way back to PD from the Agate Marina when they pulled over a car being driven by 24-year-old Derek Julian Salas Kanata. He consented to a search of the vehicle. Although Kanata told police there weren't any drugs or weapons inside, police found a glass pipe and clear plastic Ziploc bag. Both contained a white flaky residue, which tested presumptive positive for meth. Kanata, Kanata also didn't know, did not have a driver's license. He was charged with possession of a Schedule II controlled substance as a third degree felony. Well, there's a new shippo in town, and even though he serves in the armed forces, he says he won't have a problem keeping the military accountable during the build-up process. Chris Barnett has more. This is Patrick Lujan, named Acting State Historic Preservation Officer, replacing former shippo Linda Uggen. Uggen appealing her controversial firing with the Civil Service Commission. Lujan served as a former deputy ship under the Camacho Cruz administration, and he was laterally transferred from public health to fill the acting ship role. Lujan on the job at a crucial time as projects break ground on and off base in anticipation of the Marines' relocation to Guam. Lujan, a major in the Air Force Reserves, and he's also the deputy commander of the 44th Aerial Port Squadron. He says he doesn't think his military background will be a problem when it comes to policing the military's projects. My military experience, I think, is, is, could be seen as a benefit in this position uh, from an organizational standpoint, from a leadership standpoint. Um, and I'm, I'm not afraid to you know, know which role I'm playing. And as a shippo, then my job is to, to protect this and, and for, for our island and for our people. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely not afraid to, to challenge them if, if need be. We asked Lujan if he shared the same sentiments as his predecessor, concerns about the way the military is treating ancestral sites and the artifacts in them. Ogun, the former shippo, vocal and critical about the number of new ancestral discoveries on base. She told KUAM News the number of sites and artifacts being discovered was alarming. I wasn't really paying attention to, to what she was concerned with or whatnot, but... Um, you know, I, I know, speaking with the governor yesterday, um, she had some concerns with, with things on, on base, and, and um, I, I believe that she and I will be going up there next week. Lujan says one of his priorities will be studying the current programmatic agreement, which is up for review in December. We asked him if protecting and preserving cultural and historical properties was important to him. Our island is very small. Uh, we have a limited you know, sites that, that we, we need to protect uh, culturally and and just just as a people so definitely our office is responsible for being the the caretakers of those uh, being the good stewards of of these sites ancestral sites and artifacts and the way the military treats them has been one of the major reasons senators and activists have called for a pause on live firing range construction activities there's federal law there's local law dealing with how how uh, um, these sites are supposed to be treated um, so you know, if they're not in compliance, then of course we're going to have to we're going to have to use our authority to, to do something about it. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Meanwhile, Robert Koss, union rep for fired shippo Linda Uggen, says, quote, we recognize the need to fill the shippo position and appreciate that it's a temporary assignment. This will allow the CSC to properly consider the case. We wish the new acting shippo all the best in this, end quote. So stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. The next generation Galaxy has arrived. See it and believe it. The Infinity O display is the most innovative Galaxy screen yet. Capture the wider world. Take stunning photos with a 123 degree field of vision. Use your phone to charge other wireless charging devices. Don't just stand out, stand apart. I'm in the club.
Half a day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half a day, I'm in the club. Now there's a technology that's lighting the way to a new mortgage for people all across Guam. Introducing Simplify Mortgage by Bank of Hawaii, Hawaii's leading lender. Simplify Mortgage by Bank of Hawaii lets you apply for a home loan anytime from any device, making the mortgage and refi process faster and easier. Or work hand in hand with one of our residential loan experts. So put the power of choice and control in your hands. Simplify Mortgage by Bank of Hawaii. Welcome to tomorrow. Matson is in this community. We've been in this community for decades. We're gonna be in this community for decades to come. Things will get busy, things will get quiet, but we're gonna be here. We're your hometown carrier. And that matters to us. Reliability is the core of our business. We take pride in ensuring that we arrive in Guam on time as scheduled. It's our local employees who understand the market, who understand the business, and provide that hard work for you each and every day. When we hold ourselves to high standards, our customers also hold us to high standards. We establish good business relationships that turn into friendships. That's why it's so important to be here and be trusted by your customers. We want you to trust Matson like your friend, like your family. No legal counsel, staff attorney, or lawyer of any kind present at the port's board meeting yesterday, and that had one board member feeling, quote-unquote, nervous. Chris Barnett's got more in this story. Former port legal counsel Phillips and Berdalio's contract expired on June 17th, and it could be months before the port hires another firm to represent it. The agency is close to hiring a staff attorney, which Port GM Rory Respicio says would handle the Port's Civil Service Commission cases, including the controversial appeals of the so-called Port 7. Respicio and Deputy GM Connie Joe Shinohara telling the board three lawyers applied for the staff attorney position and interviews are set to begin. While the board was told the AG's office has agreed to handle legal representation in the interim, there was no attorney present at the meeting. Can, can board I'm member just, Maria no, Titano. I'm just nervous. Because as a board, we don't have board counsel to protect us. And to address the concern, there's no requirement of a lawyer to be at the board meeting. The port will ask for continuances for its current ongoing Civil Service Commission cases until a staff attorney is brought on. The AG's office is currently vetting the agency's RFP for specialized legal services. While Respicio told the board the AG's office would be available for any procedural questions during the meeting, Titano was still concerned. I don't want to get hit with anything, mm -hmm. you know, not having legal counsel. That's just, I just need to put that on the record that that's, that's my big, biggest concern. I guess we concern. meet in a working session yeah. too and it's not. Are you talking about anything. a working session? Not, a, not that, just the mere fact that yeah. I think this is the first time the board has not had oh, okay. legal okay. counsel, okay. you know, and I just need. The media will spin it to, to, to kind of be interpreted that we're meeting illegally. That's the kind of thing I'm concerned about when questions are being raised about whether or not this meeting should happen with, with or without counsel here. It's spun out there by the media. But that's that, not my point. But my point that's is August. the point's being yeah. made and it, it creates a problem for us. I hope the KOM yeah. does not. Uh, they will. Mom's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Respicio updated the board also on an MOU between the port and the Coast Guard that aims to improve security measures and responses. We've got a new development in the Menengan Memorial property dispute as GovGuam has agreed to lease the land from the Mesa family. Spokesman Mark Colby tells KUAM Public Works Deputy Director Jess Garcia was on site and has clarified the issues regarding property lines at the memorial site. There's no argument, there's no debate. The access road leading in, which is lots 83 and 84, is actually the Mesa's land. Garcia confirms a lease agreement is being drafted. The lease will run from June 28 to June 22nd. On a dollar value has been made, but you know we did, we did allow them to use the access for this year. Garcia could not confirm how much Gov Guamo leased the property for, but he did say the government will pay a quote-unquote fee based on property taxes for the land. Governor's Special Assistant Stephanie Flores, tasked with overseeing memorials for liberation, also could not confirm what compensation the family would receive as part of the lease agreement. Well, GPD recently opened the doors to the new Central Command in Sinahanya, but it's incomplete. Let's look into the missing piece. 
On December 28, 2018, then-Governor Eddie Bozicavo signed Bill 332 into law, officially naming and dedicating GPD's new Senahanya Central Precinct as the Lieutenant Conception Connie Balahaja Duenas Police Station. But her name is nowhere to be found. So what happened? Was it an oversight in construction, or was Duenas' name intentionally left out? According to Gura Executive Director Ray Taposnia, Gura was not consulted when Bill 332 was passed into law, nor has his agency been consulted since. When Gura applied for the grant, it, we, the, the name of the precinct was Central Precinct Command, and that's what was, that was part of the grant application. To change that, uh, particularly to change it back in 2018 when the, when the facility was still under construction, was going to be problematic for us. Tapasya says that Gura's federal funding prohibits them from paying for the name change. However, he does not oppose or have any objections to the name change, and that now the matter lies between the legislature and the Guam Police Department. GPD spokesman Sergeant Paul Tapao says that the department does plan on renaming and dedicating the new facility after Duenas, keeping in line with Public Law 43-155. There is one inconsistency with the language of the law and the language of the HUD grant application, which is the distinction between a precinct command center and a police station. Whether or not this poses a legal problem will have to be discussed between the legislature and GPD. Last night, the Guam Memorial Hospital Board of Trustees voted unanimously to officially hire Lillian Posadas as its chief executive officer. The board, of course, is the hiring authority for the hospital administrator. Posadas tells KUAM that GMH continues to face persistent challenges with staff retention and a growing patient wait list. Posadas will undergo evaluation again in six months. Well, a proclamation signing today marks tomorrow, June 28, as War Survivors Memorial Day. War survivors and their families gather to never forget Chamorros who lived through Japanese occupation. Describes as Guam's quote-unquote greatest generation, survivors shared messages of healing. Guam War Survivors Memorial Found Foundation President, former Senator Frank Blas, Jr. Thank you for surviving and, and, and making sure that uh, we continue to perpetuate because... None of us up here would be around if you weren't. The Magahaga thanked the survivors for their sacrifices and called on the community to honor them. Acting Lieutenant Governor Tina Munya Barnes reassured survivors that they will, quote, not give up, end quote, on securing war claim payments. We'll hear, more, we'll hear from one survivor on her experience and call to action for the next generation tomorrow. Exposure to Randa, radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer in America. Senator Sabina Perez introduced two bills to make tests mandatory and more frequent. Tomas McLotnia reports. The last radon testing on Guam was in 2001. That could change. It's something that we can prevent um, and uh, as far as the bills that I introduced, uh, we wanted to focus on um, our young, young population, um, those in child care facilities and schools because they're the most vulnerable population. Bill 168 and 169 introduced by Senator Sabina Perez aims to require radon testing in schools, child care facilities, and upon the sale of residential property. Radon, a colorless, odorless, and gas carcinogen, is also cause of thyroid cancer. Currently, there are no mandated testings on island. Senator Perez also wants to test long-standing GovGuam buildings. It's a carcinogen and we can prevent um, the risks. Um, I think that's something that's worthwhile um, considering the, the, the rates of cancer here on Guam. Guam EPA environmental health specialist Roland Gutierrez says radon is most prevalent along the island's northern and southern coasts. The national standard calls for testing every five years in buildings. So, I mean, any and all efforts to bring awareness to the risk of radon on Guam, I, I, we're open to the, as, a, as an agency. He says testing at the very least will give people a choice on where to go. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tomas Manglotnia. Cesar Masi Tomas will stick around. Dave Delgado is next with sports. Keep it here. What's that? An alpha insurance customer needs a claim settled immediately? I'm on it. Agent Alpha. In the event of an accident, theft, or breakdown, each of our alpha insurer agents are trained to go above and beyond. This is my stop. There she is. Target acquired. Agent Alpha. Yes! What if you could drive your way to the most secluded beaches, energetic cities, or dramatic landscapes? Or eat your way to ancient civilizations, romantic hideaways, or the world's most hashtag destinations? Now you can. 
Earn double miles on gas and groceries with the all-new United Credit Card from First Hawaiian Bank and receive 30,000 bonus miles. Gas, groceries, getaway. Apply now at fhb.com slash united. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year-round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUM Sports. Thanks for watching. We start the show off tonight with a look at our men's national indoor volleyball team as they prepare for the upcoming Pacific Games. Check it out. Team Guam will be suiting up nine players for the men's indoor volleyball team in Samoa. The volleyball program is rebuilding with only two players on the team having Pacific Games experience. Team captain Leandro Riogilio says the team has a lot to prove at this year's competition. We're pretty much starting on a clean slate, so we have something to mold off of, you know, start fresh and build something new. So we got a lot of young talent. We have a couple of veterans on the team who can guide us in the right direction. Helping lead the team will be veteran player John Paul Timinglo. Eric Atta is the only player on the roster currently playing collegiate volleyball. Double I, Double AG MVP Aiden McDonald is also on the team looking to gain Pacific Games experience. Using their youth uh, to their advantage, you know, uh, they're young, you know, uh, to absorb more of the game, uh, to improve on it, to go out there and represent Guam to the Guam volleyball to the best of their ability. And you know, just just being, uh, you know, stewards of the game. Guam's athleticism and drive to want to be able to compete against the best teams in the region is the team's biggest motivation. Despite the lack of size, as in most of these sports teams, the island fields, it's heart and determination fueling Team Guam. Some of those countries got really, you know, tall players. That's probably one of our little disadvantage here when Guam is just being exposed to a lot of the height. But... Um, you know, all, all we got to do is count on each other. Uh, we're, we're taller all as one, you know, than just individually. We got height, so just backing up each other will we'll compensate for that, that uh, height differential, you know, and trusting each other out there. Wallace and Fatuna, Fiji, Tahiti, and Samoa are all on Guam's radar heading into the Pacific Games. Most of the club team players have dual citizenship, so the talent pool is deep for them to choose from. For Guam, four out of the nine players are returning from last year's micro games held in Yap. It's uh, a level that we don't normally get to play at here on Guam because it's so limited. Hoping to gain a higher um, experience to play at and you know a more competitive level, you know to improve our game and find out what our actual weaknesses are. Coming from the last micro games in Yap, you know we didn't we we didn't do our best. So this is something to come back from, you know, and show our island that you know, we can hang with the big boys out there. Switching over to some women's basketball news, University of Guam women's basketball team signed their second player to their roster. Jezzy Vieben signed her UOG athletic letter of intent and partial tuition scholarship to play for the Lady Tritons. Vieben played two years for the JFK Islanders. She was a member of the UOG Trident women's recreation squad for two semesters.
Check out Triple J's spectacular deals going on now during the hot summer savings event. Zero down and no payments for 90 days. Get into a Mazda CX-5 at its lowest price of $19,995 or $152 per paycheck. The big boy truck, the Ford F-150 starting at $282 per paycheck or the Honda Civic starting at only $176 per paycheck. Triple J says yes. Purchase your next vehicle online at TripleJGuam.com today. Triple J, customers first. Half a day, na ano si Judy Flores, Tauto in Alohan. I came here in 1957 when I was a child. My parents were hired as contract teachers, and I was immersed in the village life. I learned to speak Chamorro because everyone spoke Chamorro then. We do have more than just sun, sand, and shopping. We, we have a spirit here that people can definitely feel. The Hafaday spirit embodies the history, the culture, the language. Food is also a, a very important part of the culture. You offer food. That's the package altogether. The Hafaday spirit is how the people welcome a visitor, a stranger, and make them feel at home. And I've always felt that, especially in Inalahan, and I believe that the Hafaday pledge is, is creating that throughout the island. now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. 